Hello, welcome back. In previous video, we learned how we can install Airflow in our computer. In this video, we are going to overview Airflow UI. After signing in your Airflow, you will land in the DAX page, which is this page. Here, we have a list of all pipelines or DAX that we have. For example, in this case, which is an Airflow example, we have dataset consumes underline one pipeline. So this is a pipeline or DAG. And each DAG has a name and also it may have some tags. You can search uh, air, uh, pipelines based on their name or based on these tags. For example, if you want to search all the pipeline that has data set in their name, you can go here and search data set and it is going to filter all the DAGs that have data set in their name. So currently we have six DAGs that have data set in their name. Another way to search tags is based on tags. So for example, if you want to search the tags that have example in their tag, you can simply go here and filter tags by tag and search, for example, example. And it's going to filter all tags that have example tag. So it makes it easy to navigate between your pipelines. Sometimes you have, for example, more than 1,000 pipelines. So it's this way you can simply filter the DAGs that you want, and you can check those DAGs. Another thing that you will notice here is that you have all active and pause buttons here. All shows all the all DAGs that you have. In our case, we have 53 DAGs. Active shows the active pipelines. Currently, we don't have any active pipelines. If you want to make the pipeline active, you need to go come here, and here you can pause on pause DAG. So simply you can click here, and you can unpause DAGs. For example, in, we unpause first two DAGs. So if we refresh Airflow, you will see that currently we have two active files, active DAGs. It means that two, two DAGs are running and we have 51 DAGs that are paused. You can see here. Then we have running and failed button. Running button shows the number of the DAGs that are currently running. So they are running right now. So you will see here. And failed showed the number of the DAGs that their last run failed. So this will make it very simple to filter. For example, if you have 1,000 DAGs and some of them failed, so you can easily filter failed DAGs and you can check them to see what happened and what caused that fail. Then you have owner. So basically owner shows that who owns this pipeline. In our case, because we right, right now we are using Airflow draft, so Airflow is owner of all the pipelines. Then you have runs. This is basically showing the overview of the pipeline. For example, it shows dark green shows success. It means that this tag ran before one time and it ran successfully. If something happened to the pipeline and if it fails, it's going to turn to red. So it will show one red. It means that this, this pipeline failed one time. And if it is currently running, it's going to showing a white grid, which we will see later. Then we have schedule. The schedule means that how often we want this pipeline to run. For example, if it is a data set, it means that whenever that data set that connecting to this pipeline updated, or when it updated, this stack will automatically will be run. We have also time dependent runs scheduled. For example, daily means that we want this pipeline to run every day. None means that we don't want this pipeline to run in a schedule. So maybe we want to run it, for example, manually, and or the schedule is not currently defined for this one, so we don't want to run it. Next thing that we have is the last run. Basically, last run shows that when this pipeline ran last time. For example, in this case, this pipe, this specific pipeline ran in this time. This is the last time that it, it was run. Then we have next run. Next run shows that when this tag is going to run next time. So in this case, it says that we, this pipeline is dependent on this data set. So as soon as this data set updated, this tag is going to run. Or in time dependent, it's going to show when will be the next run, which is daily. So if we run that today, the next run will be tomorrow. Then you have Recent, ta recent tasks. So it means that what, what, what was the recent task that this, this tag involved and it's wrong. 
So basically, you, you are, we are going to see this in detail in a few minutes. And then you have actions. So actions means that you can trigger this tag or you can delete the tag if you want. So let's check one of these tags. Okay, so I, I triggered this tag, as you can see, it's turned to the light green. And it means that it is currently running. And this one is showing one here, which means that one of the tags are currently running. Let's check one of these in detail. For example, let's check this one. Here, again, you are going to land in the grid page. You have pause on pause button here for this specific tag. So it means that you can pause or unpause this one. So let's unpause it. And then you have all information about the schedule, which is daily here. And then we will be the next run here. And you have a run interval here. And then you have trigger. So you can manually trigger this pipeline and let it to run. And as you can see here, it started to run. Here, these bar charts are showing duration of this duration of run. For example, in the last two runs, which in the last run is, it took 24 seconds, but currently is taking less almost 10, 10 seconds to finish. And here you can see that the status of all these tags are successful. You have all this information here as well. So you have great summary of the, all the tasks that you have and the, all the tags, when tags run and it will be the next run and how long it's going to take this in the average to run, what was the maximum time that it took to run and what's the minimum time and so on. Then you have graph, which you have here and here as well. So if you click on graphs, it's going to show the graph of the tag. So basically the tasks inside the tag. So in our case, in this specific tag, we have only one task and it's a bash operator. So it's showing the condition of this task. But in real case, you are going to have many tas tasks inside each tag. For example, let me find another tag here, which has more than one task. Uh, let's check this one. So here. As you can see, we have three tasks inside those, that tag, and this is showing the relation between tags in a graph. So you can simply, again, unpause this tag and then trigger to see how this tag is running. As you can see here, this is the list of the tasks that we have in, inside tag, and this is showing the how, how long it's going to take, is taking tag to run, and this is the status of each task. Task number one is success, and task number two is skipped. So you, you have, you, you can check from here that what is the meaning of each color. So this one shows that this tag is skipped. And again, the last task is run successfully. So what this one is doing maybe is that we have a time, and if the time is, for example, in the some specific cases, it's going to run this task, and if it is not, it's going to run this task. So in our case, we, we don't have that date, that time in that specific range. So our pipeline escape this task and go and run this task, which, which is the outside of that range. And so this one is turned to escape and these two are run successfully. So let's run this one once more. And each time you are running, you are, you are again going to have duration bars here and the performance of each task. Then you have calendar. So this calendar is basically showing that when the in the calendar when this tag run and it starts of that tag. For example, in our case, this tag run once in yesterday and two, twice today. So in this tutorial, I ran this tag twice, so it's showing that today this tag run twice. And also I ran this tag yesterday, so it shows that one successful run also happened yesterday. So this is very important because in some case you want to check your performance of your pipeline once a week or something or or once a week or in every 10 days or something like that. So it's going to show exactly when this pipeline runs successfully and when it's failed in which day and you can trigger that specific day to bring in the day, bring in all data. Then 
you have task duration which is basically showing that how long it's going to take each task and then you have code so it's showing the code that involved in this specific data for example here in this case this one is showing the python code that is written for this specific DAG, so you can check the check the code without going outside of Airflow UI. Then you have details. So this is basically showing that what exactly happened to this DAG. For example, it's showing again showing that uh, schedule daily, and we don't want to catch up. So catch up means that, for example, if you run, so you are basically defining one uh, start date for each task. And then, for example, let, let's say that we specified this start date for each DAG last month, and we run the, the run DAGs today. So it means that we have some gaps between the start date and the today that we run. So if we want to also run all the previous days from the start point, if we put catch up true, it's going to run all those days as well. But when it's false, it means that we don't want to go and run all historical data. So we want to start, for example, just from today. And then the other inf information that you have is that number of the tasks that you have here in this uh, specific DAG. And if you have any argument that you need to provide to successfully run this DAG, you need to provide here. So in our case, we don't have anything. So basically, uh, sometimes you are when you are triggering their pipeline here, so you have two options. One, trigger DAG, or the second option is that trigger with config. So sometimes you are providing those conflicts when running this specific DAG. So all those information are going to list here. But in our case, because we don't have, so it's going to be empty. And then again, who is the owner and the location of the files and so on and tags are all here listed in the listed here. So they will have all information that you need for each DAG. And one more thing is that when it's DAG, we are going to talk a lot about the scheduling interval, but for for example, when it's a daily, so daily means that at when when you want to this have this run daily. So for example, in this case, it's at zero zero UTC time. Then you have admin. So in ad, under admin, you have variables. So here you can define you can define variable or imports import variables, and then you can use these variables in your DAX. So simply. In a simple case, it is a key value information. For example, we want to define test as a variable name, and we want to put the value for that. For example, 34567 is a value of this variable test, so we can simply save it, and then we can use this key in our DAX. Then you have configurations, which shows the configuration of Airflow, and you have connections. So in most cases you want to connect your airflow to external sources to get the data or uh, or simply uh, uh, load transform data to other databases so you need connection between airflow and external sources so here you can define this connection for example if you want to connect to amazon redshift or other sources you can simply choose it here from here and then you can put the connection ID and you can connect your airflow to external sources to get data or load the transform data to Amazon, Azure or other class. So we are going to learn all this in later. And then you have plugins. So if you want to add some packages or something to your airflow, you can use these plugins. You have providers which shows the basically shows the, the provider of each package packages. So for example, uh, we have if you want if you are using amazon integration this is the package name and this is the last version latest version that you have and also you have pools so basically idea is that if you have many tasks and some of those tasks are important for you and you want to uh, put more resources there to run it faster you can manage your pool and put more resources in that specific task and you can limit the number of resources to other tasks then you have XCOMS. So XCOMS basically is is a way that tasks can communicate with each other. So you are you have you can uh, transfer some data from one task to another task using XCOMS. And at the end you have docs here. So basically this is the documentation for Airflow. So you can so it's a simply documentation. So you can check it here. That's it for 
uh, airflow ui see you in next video